ready to go in Portland and in Bangor. We will check in with them in just a bit. You can always call the number at the bottom of your screen anytime to make a donation and talk to these nice people who got up super early in not so great weather to get here to help this great cause. And we're going to get some much more on that. But before we do, as you already know at this point, we are cue the band. Cue, we're keeping an eye on some weather. We got some weather going on. Yeah, we got Storm Center team coverage. Our crews are out across the state as we track the snow. We're keeping track of road conditions. Let's start with the latest on the forecast from Chief Meteorologist Todd Gutner. So oh. official. So official. So official. Yeah, we need to like, you know, loosen that up a little bit. We don't need to use that chief stuff. It's all fine. All right, let's get started here. We've got the radar to show you. The leading edge is working up through Augusta. We do have some flurries in and around the greater Bangor area, but the storm itself is down here. That's where the snow is steadiest. That's where the roads are deteriorating. Along the coast, there may be just a touch of mixing out there at Bitterford Pool, the Kenny Bunks, Wells, where temperatures are slightly milder, but there won't be much mixing from the storm system at all. A lot of it will be snow. A little wet at first, but drying out as we get into the afternoon. 9 a.m., the snow moves all the way up through the Queen City through Ellsworth and Bar Harbor, not much farther north than that. Steady snow though elsewhere and driving around is going to be pretty difficult. Midday, steady snow bands. This will probably be pretty heavy stuff in here. The flake size gets big. The efficiency of the accumulation is good, an inch per hour at that time. Still snowing 2-3 o'clock in the afternoon and then these snow bands Migrate offshore will just be clearing out this evening and it'll improve quite a bit. It's looking like a solid three to six inches with in spots higher amounts. There could be a little zone of six to eight from the mid coast back through Lewiston, Auburn and the Oxford Hills. Three inches Bangor, north of Bangor, not much at all. In fact, northern parts of Arista County, virtually nothing. And then also a little bit of mixing will hold the mounts down along the south coast there in York County. So snow picking up through the morning commute. It'll be steady through the middle of the day, and then the storm is gone late this afternoon. But the wind will pick up. It turns colder, and there'll probably be some blowing snow around too. Snow almost from start to finish today. That's storm one. We've got a second one to talk about. I'll do so in a few minutes. All right. All right, but first we're going to check in with Mr. Zach Good Blanchard, Zach who... Blanchard. Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> it's just one of those busy mornings, guys. Uh, and as Todd's been saying, just a messy morning commute. In fact, we have some breaking news to tell you about this morning already. Because of those road conditions, there is a tractor trailer off of I-95 in South Portland. That's right around mile 45. Uh, here's a picture a viewer sent us. Uh, you can see uh, that tractor trailer pretty much uh, mangled and in, in a mess, uh, but it's causing some backups right now. We're hearing as emergency crews are at the scene. Uh, thank you to our viewer, Charles Neal, for sending this photo in to us. Uh, but as we said out here this morning, uh, the roads are uh, just absolutely a mess. We're here in Falmouth on 95. A lot of the big, uh, the biggest issue is visibility wise. So if you take a look at Stormy's camera now, you can see uh, just the snow coming down, a pretty routine snow event. You're not looking at that slushy, icy mess, uh, but the snow is making it hard to just simply see. Uh, and as it piles up on the roadways, it'll get more slick throughout the morning. But we, of course, have seen those plow crews out, speeds down to 45 miles per hour. We'll be continuing to keep an eye on this throughout the rest of the morning. But again, avoid mile 45 northbound on I-95 in South Portland due to that tractor trailer tra tra tractor trailer truck crash. We'll be heading to the scene as we speak. All right, Zach, thank you very much. Stay safe out there, please. And as you can imagine, there'll be a lot of things closed today. A lot of them already rolling in. You'll be able to find a full list of them, any delays by going to our website and checking out our mobile app as well. Yeah, and of course, you can track the forecast anytime, anywhere using our mobile app as well. All right, other important news we're following. The impeachment has landed in the U.S. Senate. This morning, lawmakers are taking the first steps toward putting the president of the United States on trial. Tracy Potts is in Washington and has the latest for us this morning. Sheridan Lee, good morning. Today, you can expect to see that new evidence and the man behind those documents is speaking out for the first time exclusively to MSNBC. Lev Parnas, an associate of Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani, addressing the issue at the heart of impeachment. That the president didn't know what was going on. Uh, president Trump knew exactly what was going on. He's talking about efforts by himself, Giuliani, and others to get Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. President Trump said he did not know those involved. 
You're saying that was not a true statement from the president. He lied. New evidence from Parnas, including this voicemail. Hey, Lev, BT here. Uh, we've got a request to talk to uh, the big one. Now heads to the Senate, along with articles of impeachment, accusing the president of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. They have a hoax going on over there. Let's take care of it. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has named the seven managers who will make the case. The president is not above the law. He will be held accountable. They passed the first presidential impeachment that does not even allege an actual crime under our laws. Today, the Senate formally receives the charges. Impeachment trial of Donald John Trump. Chief Justice John Roberts is sworn in to preside over the trial. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announces the trial to start Tuesday. And Roberts swears in the 50 senators who will act as jurors. The Senate's setting some pretty strict rules for this trial. No standing on the Senate floor, no talking, no cell phones, and all questions must be submitted in writing. In Washington, Tracy Potts, New Center, Maine. Good morning, everyone. I'm New Center, Maine, Samantha York, here at our annual Project Heat Telethon. We're raising money all day to help keep Mainers warm. It's pretty exciting, right, guys? Exactly. But it's a little quiet in here. We need to get our phones ringing. The number is right there on your screen. We have volunteers here in Portland and in Bangor ready to take your call. We'll be checking in with you guys all day. And of course, we've also got some storm coverage this morning. Take a look right now. These are big snowflakes falling and they continue to fall through most of the day. We'll have an update on that live from Portland coming up right after the break. Yep, you can start to see some tire treads and tracks on the road there, High Street, in fact, behind them there in Portland. Uh, snow picking up for the morning, steady snow midday, gone with some wind later on. Looks like we'll have a lot of cancellations in the school districts. Come on back, we'll go over the storm in a few minutes.
All right, 510 time now for your morning rush. The Maine Chief Medical Examiner's Office is expected to release information on what killed a fisherman who fell overboard in Portland. It happened yesterday morning at the Portland Pier as a fishing boat was preparing to dock. He was pulled from the water. The man later died at the hospital. The police have not yet released his name and are waiting until they can notify his next of kin. It's going to cost the town of Rockland $4.8 million to protect its waterfront properties from rising seas. That is according to a new report from the Maine Department of Maine Resources. The report also looked at NOAA's sea level rise projections. The organization predicts a one foot rise in storm surge wave action by 2030. A student was expelled from a private Christian school in Kentucky after posting a photo on social media where she was wearing a rainbow shirt and posing with a rainbow cake. In a letter, the school said the photo showed a breach in the school's code of conduct and went against the school's philosophy. The girl and her parents are appealing the expulsion. The E. coli outbreak linked to romaine lettuce appears to be over. According to the CDC, almost 170 cases were reported in 27 states. 85 people were hospitalized. No deaths were reported. The source of the contamination is still under investigation. And that is your Morning Rush. Well, we are keeping all kinds of eyes on this snowstorm <laughs> this morning, not just our own. Two of them are in the head of meteorologist Mike Slifer. He's out outside on the uh, weather deck this morning in Portland. How are things looking, Mike? Lee, Sharon, on my drive in this morning, I was like, hey, you know what? We've got some mixing out here. It's not all that bad, but we have since transitioned to just straight up snow. And these are big snowflakes. You can actually hear them as they're falling and hitting things. So always impressive to hear that. And that means that they're stacking rather efficiently efficiently too. We've got some tire tracks on the roads behind us at when I first came in roads were wet. They weren't snow covered. It really wasn't all that bad out. But at this point, a lot of the roads are becoming white. And as these snowflakes continue to fall, that's something that we will see more of as the morning goes on. I also want to mention that underneath some of this snow, there's just a little bit of slush, which makes it extra wet, a little bit heavier to move and also makes it just a little bit slicker out here. For now, things aren't all that cold, but we will watch those temperatures drop as we get a little bit later into the day, which means that refreezing is going to be a bit of an issue once we get into the afternoon hours and especially overnight tonight. But I have to say it looks pretty. It feels a little bit festive. The downside, of course, to all of this is that a lot of people have to travel to work. And if you're not lucky enough to get a snow day, you will have to travel to school. Reporting in Portland, meteorologist Mike Slifer, News Center, Maine. All right, with all the pros and cons. Thanks, Mike. Well, live in Bangor this morning for our annual Project Heat Telethon, we have a big group of volunteers back here behind me who are ready to answer calls. So please keep those phones ringing.
All right, it is 516. This thing has whooshed in here this morning, Todd. Did you guys get the, the text for the kids yet? Yes. Oh, yeah, mine came at yeah. uh, yeah. 4 Just a 50. little bit ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah they're, they're really coming in fast. Now, I, I noticed there's over 100 uh, delays or cancellations. Well, I texted my kids, and I said, hey, no school today, guys. And they both wrote back, the teenagers. I go, why are you awake? <laughs> because they don't have school. Because they knew they weren't going to have school. <laughs> they can so go back to bed. Up. And by the way, all those closings Wait, like and they delays. they never went to bed? You don't have teenagers yet. What? Uh-huh. Yeah, welcome to Fortnite. Oh, oh my gosh. It's a problem. Can I tell them something yes. kind of important? Sorry. All That's those closings crazy. and delays are on our website and mobile app because um, we're running our project Heat Telethon today, so we're keeping that number up at the bottom of the screen. I don't want to clutter up the screen too much for you. So some major schools have, school districts yeah. have closed this morning already. You just saw a list and the complete list is online. Right, and, and I don't think Bangor was on there yet. I didn't see Bangor on there. Um, that's, but Portland is, Portland is. Those are, the, those are the biggies, obviously, in the state. All right, let's take a look at the radar. And, uh, you know, the snow has been working in from the west slowly, but it's making progress and it's pushing up through Augusta right now. Not much north of there, except for some flurries in the Queen City and surrounding communities, too. A lot of this is snow, except maybe in like Wells or Bitterford Pool down in Kittery and the Yorks, where temperatures, as you can see, are slightly milder, 36 in Wells. Cape Saco, 33. Portland's 34. But north and west of town, it's a degree or two colder, and that's making a huge difference. It's slushy roads along the coast, and it's snow-covered ones inland. And the steadiest of the snow right now is over the greater Portland area, up through Falmouth, and then back into Wyndham, up through Sebago Lake, and then on into the Oxford Hills. The flake size is already pretty large, and I expect it to stay that way. It's going to be a really efficient snowfall right on into the early afternoon. The leading edge of the storm up through Augusta, as I mentioned, closing in on Waterville and parts of the mid coast. Rockland's had some flurries up through Camden, but Bangor, just a couple of really tiny, tiny, tiny snowflakes. They're kind of pretty, actually, when they reflect in some of the light. There's the storm back in New York State. It'll emerge in the Gulf of Maine where it swells up and throws moisture back into the colder air. That's going to be you know, that snow making machine right up into the early afternoon. So the snow expands east. The intensity continues to pick up through the morning drive and temperatures will drop a degree or two and roads are going downhill fast. Please be really careful. We've already had some spin outs and some accidents and they include the turnpike too. steady snow through the middle of the day. This is noontime again, large flakes, efficient accumulation. Some of the rates may be around an inch per hour, really difficult driving conditions through the middle of the day. Early afternoon, still snowing and still some pretty healthy snow along the coast. But after three o'clock, those bands collapse. And by the evening commute, things will be vastly different and much improved. Although at this point, there will be some blowing going on. The wind is picking up. I could see some blowing snow to kind of, you know, make things a little more difficult for cleanup and at least slow the evening commute down. And of course, we've got a lot of cleanup to do. I'd say a solid three to six inches just about everywhere from Bangor southbound and some locally higher amounts in here in this stripe of purple. I could see a six, seven, maybe an eighth inch in a few spots. I've got Bangor at three inches north of the city. Very little snow is going to fall one to three through the central highlands and then virtually nothing across northern Aroostook County. I also expect amounts to be held down a little bit down along the York County coastline. That's because it'll be a wetter snow compacting and also mixing with some rain at times. Tomorrow, Arctic blast. Oh, it's going to be cold. It's going to hurt a little bit too. Wind chills will be around zero all day long. Saturday's cold and calm, and the next storm makes a run at us Saturday night through Sunday morning. A similar track and path to the one that's going through right now. So it'll be warm at the start here, and it'll try to mix and try to bring us some rain, but I think the majority of it is going to be a mainly snow event except for maybe the south coast or some of the islands and peninsulas. So we'll keep an eye on that. The steadiest of this will be Saturday night. Very early Sunday morning, this thing is out of here. In fact, I think there'll be sunshine for the second half of the day as we clear things out. Early thoughts, early guesstimates, three to six inches, maybe a little bit more in this stripe away from the coastline where it's colder. So we'll see how that plays out. But again, several inches and it looks plowable. Marine forecast, gale warnings go into effect at noon. That's when the north wind picks up. That's when the storm goes by us and we start to collapse and we get those stronger winds on the backside. 
All right, temperatures today around 30, 32 degrees. Snow tapering this afternoon. Sunny tomorrow, but bone chilling cold. Only 18 inland and 20 at the coast. Similar temps on Saturday as the clouds increase. Saturday evening looks like around 5 o'clock, right as, the, as darkness is settling in. The first flakes will fall. It'll fall all night long and taper first thing Sunday morning. So it's more of a Saturday night event now. And then we're clearing out. We get a lot of sunshine next week, but boy, that's a cold pattern. Next week looks like we're in the freezer <laughs> for a while. Oh boy. Well, right. hey, funny you should mention that. Right? It's because, applicable. Yeah. yeah, because today's snowy weather will probably make you want to just stay warm and cozy inside the comforts of your home. But as we're sure you're aware, not everyone can afford to heat their homes effectively, and that's why we run our Project Heat Telethon every year. Chloe Tebow is at the phone banks in Bangor this morning. Calls coming in yet, Chloe? Hi, Sharon and Lee. Yeah, we've had a couple of calls so far, but it has been a little bit quiet, and clearly we have a big group of volunteers who are ready to answer those phones. So please call in at the number at the bottom of your screen. And we just want to go over a couple of the numbers about how important it is to raise this money for Mainers to help heat their homes. Um, for a well-insulated home about, of about 1,500 feet, they might use 540 gallons a year of fuel oil. And that means that it at 265 a gallon it costs more than $1,400 to heat a home, and that doesn't even include heating water. And about two-thirds of Maine households use fuel oil as the primary way to heat their home. And for homes that are on fixed incomes, especially with seniors, that can be a really burdensome cost. So please feel free to donate today. We will be answering phones until 7.30 tonight. And last year we raised more than $151,000, which ended up helping uh, 542 households. So like I said, please call in. We have volunteers who are excited today. And later on, we're gonna hear from some people who are working with organizations throughout the year to help with this really important cause. In Bangor, Chloe Tebow, New Center, Maine. All right, Chloe, thank you. And of course, we're keeping our
All right, 526 on this snowy Thursday. The snow obviously going to make for a much slower commute, pretty much pretty much wherever you are, not everywhere, but we've got you covered all across the state. Right, and then there's the flip side of all of this, which is the fun playing in the snow, and we like to check in with meteorologist Mallory Brook in the mountains with more on all of that. Yeah, it's just a winter wonderland out here this morning, Lee and Sharon. And, you know, I'm always happy when, when it's snowing. And it means good news for all of our winter sports enthusiasts, too, because we're getting another nice packed powder base for everyone to get outside and enjoy. Right now, we have just been about a half inch, three quarters of an inch of snow here in Norway. Started just after 3 o'clock this morning, and it is pretty steady. The flakes are fairly small at this point in time. We're not getting the chunky flakes to Temperatures are in the 20s at this point, so we have a little bit of that drier snow as compared to the coastline. But we do have that complete coating here. The driveway is already recoated after those few refresher snows a little bit earlier this week. And of course, schools have closed here. Uh, just a handful of snow days so far here in Oxford Hills, but the kiddos get to sleep in. I haven't heard from mine, Lee, so I think they're still sleeping. They still want to get on that train. Uh, but as we go through the day today, of course, we're expecting uh, anywhere from about five to six inches here in the area it might even be a little bit more depending on where those banding structures set up of course is what Todd's been talking about but we are looking at this as just a wonderful start to the holiday weekend for the ski areas and of course we're not done we've been talking about that second storm too we'll send it back to you she just gets so happy when the snow <laughs> comes which is good for you Mallory all right thank you very much Coming up, I'm News Center Maine's Zach Blanchard. You're taking a live look at the main turnpike right now where a tractor trailer has slid off in the northbound lane. Police here on the scene right now will be continuing to keep you updated on those road conditions coming up. Snow showers continue here in Portland this morning. We've got some big, chunky, wet flakes falling. We'll talk about what you can expect as you step outside the door this morning coming up in just a few minutes. All right, so obviously we've been talking a lot about the snow today and for a lot of us it can be hard to imagine if you go through winter and you don't have heat. Yeah, that's
reality for a lot of people, which is why we have our annual Project Heat Telethon. You can call the number at the bottom of your screen anytime today until 7.30 tonight. Your donations will help people heat their homes this winter. Last year we raised $188,000, which helped provide heating assistance to more than 670 households in Maine. And, and you know, this is a stopgap measure. This is an emergency fund for people who are really in dire need of heat. So your your money will be well used. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you noticed, but Shannon Moss is there jumping into the picture to make sure that we see her. So just call her. She's <laughs> I know, call her. It's keep her busy. Ask for Shannon. Girl okay. needs something to keep her busy. <laughs> All right. We've got a first look at your weather in today's top stories just ahead. Our next half hour begins right now. Alrighty, good storm center Thursday to you, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg. And I'm Sharon Rose Vasness, and we are in for a very stormy day today. We have people in various locations around the state. You'll find all the day's closings and delays on our website and mobile app. Right now, let's get to the latest on the forecast from Todd. Yeah, good morning, guys. Snow already falling in many spots across southern and western Maine. The storm kind of arrived at about 2 a.m. and uh, it's slowly working its way to the east and north. It's cleared Augusta, flurries in Waterville, a few flakes, really small ones, very fine ones falling in the greater Bangor area. But clearly this is where the steadiest of the snow is. Maybe mixing a little bit along the south coast, some of the beaches here where temps are slightly milder, but a lot of the area we already have snow covered roads where temperatures are around 30, 31 degrees. During the course of the morning, this is 9 a.m., snow gets up to Bangor, so the tail end of the commute, that's when it starts to get bad, that's the leading edge. Elsewhere, there'll be some bands setting up in here with some large flakes and efficient snow accumulations too. And that continues right up through noon, may have an inch per hour snowfall rates back through Augusta, Lewis and Auburn, down to Portland and on up into the Oxford Hills. After three o'clock, we'll still be snowing at this point, but those bands collapse real fast. And I think this evening will be much, much better. Although the wind is gonna pick up a little bit and blow some of the drier snow around. So that could kind of slow cleanup efforts a little. I'd say in general, a solid three to six inches of snow with few towns getting a little bit more, primarily in this stripe of purple, where there could be seven, maybe an eighth inch. Bangor, three inches north of the city, very little, if anything at all, up in Aroostook County. We only get about one to three inches for the Central Highlands. And I also have amounts held down a little bit along the south coast here in York County, one to three inches. It'll be a wetter snow, so it's compacting, if not mixing with a little bit of rain at times. The snow will be picking up through the morning drive. It'll be very steady through the middle of the day, and then finally tapering off this afternoon and evening. But the wind will pick up, and it starts to turn colder. So that's storm one. We've got a second one, though, over the weekend, and I expect more plowable snow. Those details are coming up in a little bit. But first, we're going to check with Zach Blanchard. He's out in Stormy, where uh, the roads are pretty bad and apparently already some accidents. Right, Zach? Yeah, Todd, they're pretty bad indeed. We've been all up and down the main turnpike and through uh, to 95. Uh, and right now we are on the scene of an accident involving a tractor trailer truck that is uh, at mile 45 northbound in South Portland. If you can take a look, this is a live picture now on the screen. Um, not sure if you can see that or not, but we're told uh, that uh, there are all the lanes of the highway are open right now. There are no accidents. Um, uh, in this area, but uh, right now, if you're in this area, definitely want to take it slow because as this snow comes down, uh, the situation just continues to get worse. Uh, a lot of this, though, is really just a snow event, your traditional snow as you're driving. Uh, really just hard to see, uh, makes for poor visibility, so you're going to want to leave more room between you and the car in front of you. Speeds on the turnpike, 45 miles per hour as per usual, so as you're heading to work or school this morning, obviously those delays continue to come in, so keep an eye on those, and we will continue to keep an eye on these road conditions, but for now I'll send it back to you. All right, Zach, thank you very much. Here are a few of the closings we're seeing already this morning, some of the larger school districts that have called in. You can find a full list of closings and delays by going to our website, checking out our mobile app. You can also track the forecast anytime, anywhere. Just download the new Center Main app, sign up for alerts, and you'll always know what is going on. All right, we'll get back to the storm in just a bit. 
First, though, some other news we're following this morning. A meth lab bust in Standish. A husband and wife are under arrest, and the state has taken custody of their four children. Police say it appears Jeffrey and Nicole Michaela were operating several meth labs at their home. This is on Maple Ridge Drive. Jeff Michaela is also being charged with violating his bail conditions from a previous arrest in a meth lab bust in Portland. After the arrest, DHHS took custody of four children, ranging in ages from three weeks to 12 years old. They were taken to Maine Medical Center to be checked out. Police say they are expecting to make more arrests in this case. There have been two fatal fires in Fort Fairfield this week. Yesterday morning, a home on Sam Everett Road was destroyed. And officials say they believe the woman killed was Hope Phillips, but they are still waiting for a positive ID from the medical examiner's office. On Monday, an elderly woman also died in a fire in her home. Investigators say they do not think the two fires are connected, however. It's nothing like driving on the road when you're like, woo! <laughs> That's probably the reaction most of us would have if a skunk got into our homes. What this woman had to go through and is still going through to get the smell out coming up. And I'm News Center Maine's Chloe Tebow, live in Bangor this morning for our annual Project Heat Telethon. Have a big group of volunteers here behind me ready to take your calls today. Last year, the Keep Maine Warm Fund raised more than $188,000 to help keep Mainers warm. So please call the donate. We'll be answering phones from 5 this morning till 7.30 tonight. Well, it's a pretty big day. We've got the storm. We've got Project Heat. And there are a lot of kids that are going to be off from school today. Cancellations are flowing in. You won't see it scrolling at the bottom of the screen, but you can get it on our website or our mobile app. And the numbers are up over 100 right now. It'll be snowing basically from the start of school to when that final bell rings. How much we get and a look at the next storm this weekend coming up in five minutes. Uh, how many times have you been driving down the road and you notice that distinct smell? It's a skunk, but what if it smelled in your house? Yeah, well, Willow Worth, who lives in Portland, has smelled that on Sunday morning. She went to let her dog out. That's when a skunk actually snuck into her home and started spraying. 
Worth says the skunk sprayed her dog and nearly everything in her house. She even had to have her carpets removed because the stench was so bad. Worth says she was able to get the skunk out of her house with the help of the Portland Police Department. She expects to be living back in the home in the next one to two weeks when the smell is a little less harsh. Insurance covers that. Uh, that was mentioned on our, our web article that okay. there is some insurance coverage right. for this. So Just yes, wondering. thank right. goodness. Made me think. So um, the skunk certainly made a name for itself in Maine, but one of the most famous skunks, of course, is Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, from, from Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. <laughs> so our stumper question is this. And if he's only one of, who's a more famous skunk than Pepe Le Pew? No, I can't think of it. What any. was Pepe Le Pew's original name? Was it Stinky Le Pew? Pepper, Skunky, or Stripes? Hmm. We'll get you that answer coming up. Good morning, everyone. I'm News Center Maine Samantha York here at our Project Heat Telethon. We have volunteers in Portland and Bangor ready to take your call and generous donations to help keep Mainers warm this winter. We'll be back with an update on how much we've raised so far. Right, lots going on today. Obviously, the snow, lots of closings, lots of cancellations, mm -hmm. lots of delays. We're trying to raise money to help people heat their homes. Yeah. I mean, there's another storm on the other. Whew. You're out of breath. It's all going on. <laughs> well, why don't you take the next like three, four minutes? Catch oh, your breath. It'll be way closer to four. Than <laughs> who are, Maybe who are you kidding? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a meteorologist. We have the gift to gab. <laughs> producers love us, don't you, producers? Hi, Rachel. <laughs> All right, the snow came surging in around two o'clock in the morning and you know, there's not much out there. There's still in most spots less than an inch of accumulation, but it's already a little slushy on roads and across the interior where it's a little colder snow covered. The leading edge has gotten up through Augusta, but not to Bangor yet, even though there are some really tiny flakes falling. They're kind of pretty ones. They're like little prisms in the light. All right, along the south coast here, some of the beaches may be mixing with some rain. Wells, for instance, is a little warmer right now, 36. Cape Elizabeth, 33. Portland's 34. So this is snow in here, but it's a wet snow, and it's kind of a slushy sl snow. And when it hits the windshield, it splats. Inland, it's a couple of degrees colder. Cumberland, Buxton, Gray's 31. Sebago, Naples, 31. And that's where the steadiest of the snow is falling right now, right over Gray, New Gloucester. 
already getting some accidents. You can see those bands sort of working up in from the south and west. There's New Gloucester right there. Lewiston, you're up for some pretty heavy snow in a matter of moments. We go northbound. I mentioned that leading edge. It has cleared Augusta and now we have flurries and light snow in Waterville. And we also have some flurries and light snow getting to the west side of Penobscot Bay from Rockland up to about Camden, closing in on Belfast. So by the end of our show, it looks like by seven, eight o'clock, that steady snow band, that snow will be surging into the Bangor area and the roads will go downhill pretty quickly too. Come on, clicker, let's work with me today. All right, here's a look at the uh, weather map. We've got low pressure off to our west. This is scooting on through. Now when it gets to the Gulf of Maine, it's really gonna flare up fast and it's gonna throw some snow back into the state. And this is gonna be kind of a drawn out system. The timing is not good for the daylight. Like it's snowing already and it's really not gonna end until like mid afternoon. So here you go with the timeline. Snow expanding and continuing to move off to the north and east. By 9 a.m. it's through Bangor and it's steady snow. Uh, the intensity will be picking up too through the morning commute. So roads are gonna go downhill very fast. They already are doing so. We get to the middle of the day, it's steady snow still. There'll be some really large flakes. I think that's going to give us some efficient accumulation. We may have an inch per hour for a while. Really tough driving conditions during the middle of the day. And right up through about 2, 3 o'clock, we still have this banding going on along the coastline. But after 3 o'clock, those bands collapse fast out into the Gulf of Maine. We'll actually start clearing out during the evening, but the wind is going to pick up. And while it'll be a better commute, it won't be perfect. Wind will blow snow back on the roads because the second half of this storm will actually be a drier snow. So the bottom half, I think, especially near the coast, will be wet and compacted. And then above that will be a colder snow and drier. And that'll be easier to move around. But we're still looking at a solid three to six with some communities getting a little bit higher, especially in this area shaded in purple. But that could actually sneak down all the way to Portland. Like I'm going to put Portland at six inches, I think when I put together this, uh, a couple of graphics for the six o'clock hour that I'm gonna show you. Three inches, three to four inches for Bangor. North of the city, not much at all. One to three through the Central Highlands, virtually nothing in, in Arista County. And then also down along the York County coastline, amounts held down a little bit. The snow there will be wetter, so it'll compact, or it'll be mixing with some rain down there too, so that'll hold the amounts down. Now tomorrow we get an Arctic blast, frigid stuff tomorrow frigid Saturday morning, frigid during the day on Saturday, highs only around 20. And here comes the next storm. Origins, same place as the one that's coming through now. Track, very similar to the one that's coming through now. So what does that mean? I think it means mainly snow with this. It'll try to do a little mixing along the coastline and the snow along the coast will definitely be wetter just like it is today. But I think a lot of this will be snow. Now the good news is it's moving very quickly. This is a Saturday night event and very early Sunday morning. But by midday Sunday, this thing is racing on out of here and probably some sunshine Sunday afternoon. Really early guesstimates on snowfall for the weekend storm, three to six inches again, and maybe a little bit more where the snow is a little drier and can uh, pile up a little bit faster, a little bit more efficiently. Okay, here's the uh, marine forecast from the Weather Service. We've got three to five foot seas. The winds are gonna get gusty. That's when the gale warning goes to an effect this afternoon. We'll see gust of 40 knots. Snow today, it'll taper off later on. Looks like after three o'clock, 30 degrees, 18 tomorrow inland, 20 at the coast despite the sunshine. A very cold one. The morning lows on Saturday will be sub-zero even at the coast. Looks like one or two below zero. Jeez, that's cold. And then we'll see that storm roll in Saturday evening right around dark. It begins 4 35 o'clock. That's when our sunset is. And it continues for the first couple of hours of Sunday and then it's gone, we'll clear out, and another Arctic blast follows that storm. And that one's gonna stick around a while. Looks like three, four days, most of next week in the freezer. Wow, we are in the heart of winter right now, cold sure and snowy. And another reminder that you can find a full list of closings and delays. There are a few right there, but all the rest are on our website and mobile app. That includes parking bans, all storm-related announcements. You can also track the forecast anytime, anywhere. Just download the new Center Main app, sign up for alerts, and you will be all set. All right, for today's Stumper, we asked, what was Pepe Le Pew's original name? Stinky Pepper? Skunky or Stripes? Uh, stinky. I'm, I'm just going to do Stinky too. I'll go Pepper. Okay. Yeah. It is Stinky. stinky. Right. The character was introduced in 1945. I remember that. In his first appearance, not really, he was revealed to be an American skunk who was faking his French accent. I remember that. I do remember that. I don't. After the cameo, he just maintained his French 
identity. So. I may need to go into therapy. I didn't know that. Stinky Le Pew. I didn't yeah. know he wasn't really French. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm horrified. All right. <sighs> okay. All right. Just give me a minute. Luckily, we have one. So we've spent a lot of time this morning talking about the cold and the snow and the cold that's about to come. But not everybody in Maine can afford to keep the heat on during these really chilly days. Yeah, let's talk about a real problem, shall we? Today, our project Heat Telethon is underway. We're trying to raise money to help people in emergency situations just get a little bit of heat for their homes. Our Samantha York is at our phone banks in Portland right now. How's it going, Sam? Hey, good morning, guys. It's a little quiet in here right now. A little too quiet if you ask me, but we have raised so far already. We've raised fifteen hundred dollars so far this morning, which is awesome, but I want to raise more and I think we can. We raised one hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars for Mainers in need last year. I think we can do it again this year. We have these volunteers in Portland and in Bangor ready to take your call. And honestly, today couldn't be a more perfect day to really show why this is so important. It is freezing out there today. Could you imagine having to go home to a house that wasn't warm? You know, so that's where Project Heat comes in to keep me warm fund. It allows us to keep hundreds of thousands of Mainers, or I should say hundreds of thousands of Mainers warm all winter long. The number's right there on your screen. Again, we have volunteers, Portland, Bangor, taking your calls all day long. I think we have a call over here. Do we? Yes, we've got more calls. This is fantastic. And I want to talk to you about if you need assistance, what you can do. Um, it's the 211 main program. We're going to break that down a little bit more for you in the next hour, how it works, how you can get involved. But again, the number right there on your screen, give us a call, donate every penny counts. We'll check back in with you guys soon. Lee and Sharon, back to you. All right, Samantha, thank you very much. Look at those busy bees waiting to answer the phone. <laughs> Let's go get those phones ringing. Got to keep Shannon Moss busy. She's got too much energy to sit still. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Lakes are falling here in Portland and they continue to stack up. We'll talk about the impacts of the commute coming up after the break. All right, we are keeping an eye and another eye and lots of eyes on the snowstorm this morning. Meteorologist Mike Slifer is among those out checking out conditions. Mike, what's the latest? 
Happy to be standing out in the middle of this right now. I have to say, I love snow. I think that anybody who's been watching us knows that. And it's continuing to come down. We've got snow falling, uh, starting to bump a little bit further north and east into Maine. So let me talk about what I see right now here in Portland versus what the radar is showing. You'll notice the radar showing that snow may be a little bit of mixing south of Portland. What I see here is big, wet, chunky snowflakes. That is what's falling. They pile up quickly, very efficient uh, to stack and also quite slick. Things are going to become increasingly slick as these snow showers continue, but I think that uh, a lot of people, at least that I've seen drive by so far, have been taking it slow and they realize that it's slick out. But something you may not realize is just how tough it is to see. These snowflakes do make it a bit difficult. Uh, visibility is going to be a bit lower this morning, especially where you start to see some of those darker blues on the radar and where there is a little bit of mixing south too. So bottom line is not exactly the best day to be out on the roads. I would recommend taking it slow and uh, giving yourself some extra time. When you wake up this morning, you're gonna have to clean out the car. In Portland, meteorologist Mike Slifer, News Center, Maine. All right, Michael, thank you very much for that. And we're looking at the conditions in Oxford Hills coming up. We have no school, temperatures are in the 20s, and the snow is coming down. The kids are happy, ski area is happy. Hopefully you're a little happy about it. <laughs> Plus, I'm News Center Maine, Zach Lanchard, live in South Portland this morning, where a tractor trailer truck has gone off the highway here. How that will impact your morning commute, coming up. All right, day like this, you wake up, it's cold, and you put on the heat, right? You don't even think twice about doing it, but it's not always that easy for everybody. Yeah, if you can imagine what it would be like to have to put on more layers inside your own home, that's the reality for a lot of Mainers, and that's why we run our Project Heat Telethon. Numbers at the bottom of your screen. You can make a donation anytime today until 7.30. They'll help people, quite simply, heat their homes 
This winter, around two thirds of households in Maine use fuel oil as their primary energy source for heat, and that can get really expensive, especially for someone on a fixed income, a senior citizen, for example. So any amount helps and it all adds up and we are really grateful for your donations. All right, much more to come on our morning report for a look at your weather, which is obviously important. Today's top story is just ahead. Our next half hour starts right now. Like right now. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sharon Rose Vasnes. You weren't kidding, were you? All right, and I'm Lee Goldberg. We are in for a very stormy morning. We've got Storm Center team coverage everywhere. The crews all across the state as we track the snow. We're keeping an eye on the road conditions, and right now we'll get the latest on the forecast from Chief Meteorologist Todd Gutner. Should we bow or? Only you, Goldberg. <laughs> Only you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, storm is surging in. Snow is surging northbound. It's clear to Augusta. We have some flurries and light snow in Waterville and the finest of flakes in Bangor, but the leading edge of the steadier snow is still an hour, hour and a half away. We have the steadiest snow falling across southern Maine right now, and it's been snowing like this for a couple of hours. We have a solid half an inch. A few spots are closing in on an inch and roads are already starting to deteriorate. A little bit of mixing along the beaches there, wells in particular on up to about Bitterford Pool, but there's not going to be much mixing with this storm. Once the storm gets in the Gulf of Maine, it'll start to draw down some colder air. These snow bands will be setting up and through the morning commute, it's going to be really difficult. I expect that steady snow to get a little bit farther north than Bangor by midday, but not much farther north than Millinocket. In northern Maine, you don't get much at all, but this is steady snow. Some of the rates in here, about a half inch per hour, really difficult driving now, right up through about three o'clock this afternoon, we're still getting steady snowfall. And then these bands collapse into the Gulf of Maine very quickly, and the evening commute will be improved, but the wind will pick up and that'll lead to some blowing snow. So that'll slow down some cleanup efforts into the evening. Three to six solid inches just about everywhere with some locally higher amounts, mostly in this area shaded in purple, less along the York County coastline and less north of Bangor. There won't be much, as I mentioned, virtually nothing in the county. Snow picking up through the morning drive. It'll be very steady through midday. And finally, it tapers off by the evening. The wind picks up and temperatures begin to drop. All right, uh, that's the latest on this particular storm. There's another one to talk about. I'll do so in about 15 minutes, the weekend storm. Zach Blanchard's live with Stormy, but right now he's out in the cold and snow. He's not in Stormy. Hey, Zach. Hey, Todd. Yeah, we're here in South Portland, where as we've been talking about this morning, there was an accident involving a tractor trailer truck here at mile 45 northbound on 95. If you take a look right now, you can actually see that this truck just completely went off the road, the trailer flipping over. Um, right now, we don't know of any injuries, but state police as well as a tow company are here on the scene. They're trying to assess the situation and see if they can get this truck removed. But uh, all the lanes to the highway are open and passable. Uh, but as we've been seeing this morning, we've been traveling uh, from Falmouth down to South Portland area and the roads are slippery. People still traveling at a pretty high rate of speed this morning, despite the fact that Maine Turnpike has lowered those speeds to 45 miles per hour. So if you're heading out today, you definitely want to take your time on the roads. Please remember to slow down, especially because of situations like this. And as the snow continues to come down, those roads will only continue to get more slick. We'll continue to keep you updated on these conditions as the morning progresses. But for now, live in South Portland this morning, Zach Blanchard, New Center, Maine. All right, Zach, thank you very much. You can see at the bottom of your screen that we've got um, your the pro the sorry, the closings because we have the project heat telethon number at the bottom. That's why you're not seeing the closings, which you would normally be seeing at this time. So the closings though are coming in, the delays, the cancellations, all of it. So you can get a complete list of everything you need to know, parking bans, any other storm center related information right on our website. It's on our new center main mobile app as well. Download it, sign up for alerts. There's just a small sample. So many schools that are canceled or delayed today and other information as well. So go to our website because of the bottom of your screen, at least for this report, the Project Heat Telephone will be staying at the bottom so you will be able to get all your information in all your different places. Impeachment trial of Donald John Trump. The House votes to send articles of impeachment against President Trump to the Senate. So 
What happens now? Well, today at noon, the Senate will officially accept the impeachment articles. Then at 2 o'clock this afternoon, Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts will be sworn in to preside over that trial. After that, Justice Roberts will swear in all of the senators to serve as jurors. Opening arguments are set to begin next Tuesday. The seven House managers who will argue the case against the president will be busy over the holiday weekend as they sort through new evidence. They hope will be considered during the trial. And now here's your morning rush in 90 seconds or less. We're expecting to learn more today about the state medical examiner's office findings about what killed a fisherman who fell overboard in Portland. It happened yesterday at the Portland Pier as a fishing boat was preparing to dock. The crew of a Coast Guard vessel saw the man fall overboard and launched a rescue boat. He was pulled from the water but later died. Police are not releasing the man's name until they are able to notify his family. A group fighting to keep Maine's law eliminating philosophical and religious exemptions for childhood vaccinations is raising a lot of money. Maine Families for Vaccines says it has raised nearly $60,000 to fight a people's veto campaign to overturn the new law. Maine people will vote on the issue on March 3rd. You can read more about this in this morning's Portland Press Herald. The chairman of the Boston Red Sox is talking about the decision to part ways with manager Alex Cora. He admitted that uh, what he did uh, was wrong, um, but that doesn't mitigate, in our opinion, the extraordinary uh, talent that he has. Cora was caught up in the sign-stealing scandal in both Houston and Boston. The search is on for a new Sox manager because, believe it or not, spring training is right around the corner. And the wildfires in Australia have been causing serious air quality problems, but some area are getting some relief. Heavy rainstorms brought some relief to the city of Melbourne. The fires have killed at least 28 people so far, and it's estimated that more than a billion animals have been lost. And that's your Morning Rush in 90 seconds or less. For more on these stories, you can check out our website or mobile app. All right, I'm expecting a solid three to six inches with locally higher amounts, but this is how I expect it to pile up. Have a look at Portland. Over the next few hours, the snowfall rates may actually eclipse an inch per hour for a little while. After 3 o'clock, there won't be much, but I'd hold off on shoveling until about 5, 6 o'clock in the evening when the storm is kaput. Lewiston, you can see we ramp up to 7 inches, tapers off a little sooner in Lewiston. You could probably get at your driveway a little bit after 3 o'clock. Bangor, we top out around 4 inches, and 3 o'clock, that's when you can get out there and start the storm cleanup. More on this particular storm and the next one. There's another one this weekend coming our way. I'll see you in a few minutes with more. And today is our Project Heat Telethon. We are raising money for the Keep Maine Warm Fund. It's the only statewide program that helps low-income Mainers with emergency heating assistance. Our volunteers are waiting for you to call them. The number is at the bottom of your screen.
All right, while you are hanging out inside today, maybe getting off to a little slower start than normal for a Thursday, Mike Slifer is not. We kicked him outside and he is in downtown Portland. Yeah, where it's been snowing for a while now, right, Mike? Yeah, I've been uh, standing in the snow out here for a little while now and it's been piling up quickly. Right now, we've got a base of some slush. So it's on the roadways and that's uh, got some snow piling up and we are going to continue to see things uh, be a bit slick out here. Uh, when we turned to me, there was a snow plow behind me, which has since moved, but the roads are actually in all right shape now. I've seen a couple of cars coming up High Street slipping just a little bit, so just keep that in mind. We are going to be dealing with these slick conditions for the rest of the morning in Portland. Meteorologist Mike Schleifer, New Center, Maine. All right, thanks, Mike, and we have teams in other places in the state as well. That's right, meteorologist Mallory Brook is tracking conditions up in the mountains. Hello, Mallory. Hello, yes, everyone very excited to see some snow, especially up this way, and kids are excited for a snow day. I'll let you know exactly what we're seeing when we head up in just minutes. Good to see Mal there. Yeah, a lot of kids off from school today. Our list is over 300 now. You can find it on our website or our mobile app. If a few communities are going to school, obviously it's winter gear. Snow from start to finish when the buses run and when they bring them home. All right, how much are we getting and how much are we getting from the next storm? I'll fill you in. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm New Center Maine, Samantha York, here at our annual Project Heat Telethon, where we are raising money all day to keep Mainers warm all winter long. I want to give a shout out to Larry in the Poland Spring Township. He just called and donated $500 to our Project Heat Telethon. The number's right there on your screen. Let's keep those phones ringing. You guys can make a difference. We'll be right back. All right, a reminder that because we have our Project Heat Telethon phone number at the bottom of the screen, you can go to our website and mobile app for all of today's closings. Usually I'd say closings and delays, but I think it's pretty much across the board yeah, closings today. Closings. There's a list of some of the larger school districts that have closed. It's pretty much everybody. Isn't yeah, it? It and Bangor is on that live, list now yeah, too. So. Last hour they were not, but they, they changed their minds. Going to get about three and a half, four inches there. So. Other than far northern Maine, pretty yeah. much everyone's going to be affected by We're this, all in right? this kind of together, a three to six. There'll be some higher amounts in there. So 
Yeah, and, and the timing's terrible for a school day. You know, the buses are going to run this morning. They would be driving in snow, and when they're bringing the kids home, it would still be snowing. Or it's great for a school day, depending on your perspective. <laughs> depending on your perspective, right. <laughs> if you don't want that school day, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> All righty, here comes the storm. It's, you know, kind of rolling on in. It's clearing. Here's the leading edge right here. It's cleared Augusta, clearing Waterville, closing in on Bangor, probably about an hour away. But the steadiest of the snow is across the far south. Now, I put some temperatures on here so you get an idea of, you know, like the consistency of it. It's a lot wetter near the coastline, and there's a little bit of rain mixing in. Wells is 36 degrees. Biddeford Pool is above freezing. Cape 33, Portland 34. And then as you go inland, it gets just a tad colder, but that means lighter, fluffier snow, drier snow, much easier to handle and to clean up later on in the game. Uh, but the roads are getting snow covered very quickly here and along the coastline. It's more of a slushy coating and the flakes are big, but they're kind of splatting. There's a lot of water in them. Got some heavy returns down here in South Portland and Cape Elizabeth. That's some heavy snow uh, all the way up through Wyndham and then on up into the Oxford Hills. We'll be checking in with Mallory Brook very shortly. I'm sure she's seeing some pretty good snowfall there. I mentioned the leading edge that's cleared Augusta Waterville. Now it's moving up 95. It's up to Plymouth. We've had some flakes around Bangor, but they've been the tiniest little things like tiny little prisms. They're really pretty and they kind of reflect in the light. But there's the leading edge up to Plymouth and uh, just getting to Belfast right now, the mouth of the Penobscot and it's working our way. So in about an hour, I'd say it gets to Bangor by the end of the show, about 7, 730, something like that. There's the storm. It emerges in the Gulf of Maine, swells up and deposits a lot of moisture back into the colder air. This is going to be a very efficient snowmaking machine for about a six hour period, like now through about one o'clock this afternoon, something like that. Snow expands across the state and intensity picking up. So roads are deteriorating right now. It's going to be a challenging morning commute, but even more challenging the midday commute. If you're driving around during the middle of the day with some of these snow bands, some of these bands will have about an inch per hour snowfall rates. The flakes will be really large. The efficiency of the snow accumulation will be really high. And these bands stick around right up to about three o'clock. And then after three o'clock, they just collapse and they fall out to sea and we'll be left with just a few flakes, clearing skies and some wind. And that has me a little concerned. While the commute this evening will be much, much better, the wind will blow some snow around. So that'll kind of hamper the cleanup efforts just a little bit. A solid three to six with some locally higher amounts, especially in this area shaded in purple. But I've got about six inches in Portland, south of Portland through York County, one to three, a wetter snow, compacting, slushier, Bangor three to four, and then north of Bangor, not much. Central Highlands one to three with just a coating across the far north. Now over the weekend, we've got another storm coming our way and there'll be even colder air to start like tomorrow's frigid Saturday's frigid. The origins of the storm is the same as this one. The track is going to be very similar. So what does that mean? Mainly snow here and mainly Saturday night. This is moving faster. I don't think it goes deep into Sunday at all. Early shot at the numbers right there. Three to six inches again for most with maybe a few higher spots away from the coast where the snow is a little drier. There's your marine forecast. Gale, gale warnings are up, seas three to five feet, and the winds pick up this afternoon, 40 knots or so. Seven day quickly, snow tapering off this afternoon, sunny and cold Friday and Saturday. Snow Saturday night tapers Sunday morning, clearing out with another cold blast to follow. Not much warmth in that forecast and two plowable snowfall events. Now let's check in with Mallory Brooks. She's live in Norway this morning in her cozy confines. Hi, Mal. <laughs> hey, Todd. Yeah, it is a, a really wonderful morning to be outside and enjoy the snow. It is beautifully just falling down. It's a light, fluffy snow here. It's not very sticky or chunky into the Oxford Hills area. So what we have been seeing is it started about three o'clock. We have a solid inch at this point in time, and it is great news for the ski areas for anyone who wants to do anything outside. I know everyone's been itching to get out snowmobiling and get out cross country skiing. And after last week's um, mess, 
yes, I think everyone's just really happy to see the white on the ground again. So expecting, as he's been talking about, upwards about six inches here, and it is definitely coming down at a steady clip at this point in time. The ski areas will be receiving just about the same. So this will be a nice, good base for them to start the holiday weekend. And of course, then we're going to add even more as we go into Saturday. So really ideal if you're trying to get away for the weekend and enjoy some of this winter wonderland because you'll be able to get to where you need to go, hunker down into the storm and then enjoy it, though, of course, bundling up. So it's a very quiet start here. Of course, the snow is falling, but we are continuing to see a uh, very light traffic going on and around because the fact schools are closed. And at least I know my husband's working from home. So lucky <laughs> him. <laughs> Mallory, you have the ability to make us feel like this is really nice. So thank uh, you for yeah. that. <laughs> Always psyched for snow. All right, with your help, we are working to help keep Mainers a little bit warmer this winter. Yeah, Chloe Tebow is with some of our Project Heat volunteers in Bangor this morning. Keep those calls coming, right, Chloe? Yeah, Sharon and Lee, we've been getting a couple more calls right now, but it still is a bit quiet in this room. We have a big group of volunteers who are ready to answer those phones. So please keep calling the number at the bottom of your screen to help keep Mainers warm this winter. A lot of older homes around Maine, many of them not that energy efficient. Which means it can be even more expensive to try to heat those homes and certainly if you're struggling because of financial issues. So you can help. Our Project Heat volunteers are ready to hear from you now. New Center Maine's Chloe Tebow joins us from our Bangor phone bank where we're just looking for some help here. Hey Chloe. Hi, Sharon and Lee. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, we have a big group of volunteers who have been answering calls all morning, so please keep those calls coming in. Um, and Jesse Moriarty from United Way of Eastern Maine has been here with them uh, picking up those phones. So can you just tell me, what does the United Way of Maine do for people around the Maine communities? Sure. So we really um, mobilize the caring power of people. So anyone in the state who really wants to help their neighbors, co-workers, or friends kind of have a hand up um, any time of the year. Uh, for any reason, that's really what we do. And during your time at United Way, how important has heating for Mainers during the winter been? Oh my gosh, so um, we actually help support 211 Maine, which is a free confidential service anybody can call um, 24 hours a day in the state, and 50% of the calls in the winter are heat related. Um, so it's a huge issue in our state for sure. 
And can you just tell me why is it so important for people to call in today to donate? Um, so what we find is we only have about half the resources we need to actually answer those calls. Um, we get more than um, more requests than we can ever fill. So we really need folks to call in and help. And you know, every little bit helps. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of money. Every thank you so much, Jesse, and thank you for being here early in the morning. And we do want to remind people today from 12 to 1 um, is our power hour, and that means Dead River Company will be matching the donations up to $20,000. So at that point in time, really important to call in and donate if you can. Again, every single cent counts. So we will be keeping you updated throughout the day. We're taking calls until 7.30 this evening. Back All right, you, thank Wayne you. Sharon. Thank you, Chloe, very much. This is one of those cold, stormy days that serves as a good reminder of why we're trying to help keep people warm this winter. Yeah, we do have much more Storm Center team coverage ahead as well, starting with New Center Main Zach Blanchard, who is outside in storm. Hey, Zach. Hey Lee, good morning. Yeah, absolutely a mess out here on the roads this morning. If you take a look at 95 right now, we're nearing southern Maine where this snow, snow is starting to turn over to rain in some spots. We'll have more on that coming up. We've got big flakes falling out here in Portland this morning and they are stacking up quickly. We'll talk about commute impacts after the break. All right, Michael, thank you. And you can see the phone number to talk to our Project Heat volunteers. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. If you are looking for the latest closings and delays, you can find a complete list of those, including parking bans, business closings, school closings, right on our website, newscentermain.com, or on our mobile app. And be sure to download that and sign up for alerts if you want to keep track of what the storm is doing, too. Uh, let's take a look at our hard-working volunteers in the Project Heat phone banks because they would love to hear from you. Yeah, they'd like to be working a little harder, if you don't mind. <laughs> it is expensive for all of us to heat our homes during the cold Maine winters, of course, but many Mainers simply cannot afford to keep their families warm. And you can be a lifeline to those families by donating to our Project Heat Telethon. Oil prices are down right now, so your donation will be able to be stretched even a little further than normal. 
everything and anything is much appreciated. Yeah. So phone number again right there, bottom of your screen. All right, we've got a first look at your weather in today's top stories just ahead. Our next half hour does start right now. All right, good morning everyone on this Storm Center Thursday. We'll be checking in with our crews throughout the state, all over the place, tracking the snowstorm. Hopefully you do not have to be on the roads this morning, but if you do, we do have you covered. Right now we'll get the latest in the forecast from Mr. Gutner. Hey T. Good morning guys. Good morning everybody at home. The storm is spreading in and it's closing in about to consume Bangor, the leading edge. It's cleared Waterville now. We've had steady snow though through southern Maine for a few hours and our accumulations are getting really close to about an inch. It's a fluffier inch inland, very wet and slushy along the coastline where there's a little bit of mixing down on some of the beaches in York County. But the majority of this storm is going to be snow and we'll see that leading edge clear Bangor by 9 a.m. And this snow will be steady for the morning commute. Roads are not in good shape, so it's going to be a challenge for you. Midday, we're getting into some banding. Some of the snow rates could be an inch per hour. Driving around will be really difficult. And those bands stick around into the afternoon, 3 o'clock or so. And then they collapse into the Gulf of Maine, and we start clearing out this evening. The wind will pick up, though, and even though the evening commute will be much better, there could be some blowing and drifting as those winds pick up out of the north, gusting over 30 miles per hour. A solid 3 to 6 inches, locally higher amounts, especially in this area shaded in purple. I've got about 3, 4 inches in Bangor, but north of Bangor, not much. The Central Highlands, just 1 to 3, and also not much down on the coast of York County, only 1 to 3. A wetter snow, slushier, and even mixing with some rain. So snow picking up right now. It'll be steady through the middle of the day, and then gone for the evening, but windy and turning a lot colder for the end of the week. We'll talk more about this storm and the next over the weekend in a few minutes. First, here's Zach Blanchard and Stormy. Hey Todd, yeah, as you've been saying, the roads are just absolutely a mess this morning and we're actually in uh, nearing southern Maine into York County where uh, you just mentioned uh, and on Twitter you said that there's even some change over to rain in parts, but we are looking right now if you take a look at 95 uh, that the roads are slick here. Uh, and it has primarily stayed snowy, rainy mixture, uh, but uh, people are taking it slow. Speeds all along the main turnpike lowered to 45 miles per hour, but we have been hearing some reports of accidents, including a tractor trailer truck at mile 45 northbound in South Portland. Uh, as you go up the turnpike, it's going to get worse throughout the day this morning. Uh, we have also been checking in um, on the Portland International Jet Port. Everything there uh, actually, believe it or not, running on time this morning, although it's definitely having an impact on schools and local situations. Of course, we're having a lot of delays and closings rolling in and state offices are delayed openings today with the House and Senate out of session. But we're going to continue to keep an eye on these road conditions throughout the rest of the morning. For now, I'll send it back to you, Leah Sharon. All right, thank you, Zach, very much. And you can see the phone number to talk to our Project Heat volunteers at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, that is usually where you would see closings and cancellations at this point, but the telethon number is there for you today. So if you're looking for the latest closings and delays, there is a total list. It's right on our website. It includes the parking bans, everything else storm center related. It's on our website or our mobile app. You can download it, sign up for alerts. Everything you need is just a touch of a finger away. All right, other news we're following this morning. A couple in Standish have been arrested for allegedly operating a meth lab out of their home on Maple Ridge Drive. Police say it appears that Jeffrey and Nicole Michaela were operating several meth labs on their property. DHHS was also on scene, took custody of four children. They ranged from age from three weeks old to 12 years old. They were taken to Maine Medical Center to be checked out. Jeffrey Michaela is also being charged with violating his bail conditions from a previous meth lab arrest that was in Portland. Police say they're actually expecting to make even more arrests. So many Maine families struggle to heat their homes during the winter months. And that's why we are holding our Project Heat Telethon for you today. New Center Maine's Samantha York joins us from our Portland phone banks with some of the folks who make Project Heat available. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. Yeah, the phones are a little quiet again, guys. So if you can call and make a donation, we want to hear from you. We're trying to keep as many Mainers warm this winter. And actually, we just got a call from Aroma Joe's. They just donated a thousand dollars to our Project Heat campaign, which is amazing. Thank you so much for that. 
Someone who can really explain how much this means is Liz Cotter Schlex. Let me have you come in here. She is the CEO and president of the United Way of Greater Portland. Ooh. What type of, this donation, what type of commitment is that, I guess? It is phenomenal. And we have just been so amazed at how our community, both corporations, businesses, and individuals have stepped up to really help their neighbors in need. We're so grateful to Aroma Joe's for that. And in fact, there was actually a thousand dollar individual donor named Liz. Oh my Thank you, goodness. Liz and Connie, Connie Bunk. Um, who actually just called in as well. So all you Liz's out there, we can take your thousand dollars. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much. That's so great. What is it like to have the United Way part of such an amazing project? We are so proud um, to be a part of this imp important initiative. We're so grateful to you all um, for the work that you do every year for this. Mainers need this support. You can see it today. Can you imagine being home with your kids today mm. on this snowy day and not being sure that you have heat? Um, it's a really challenging time for people in our, fa in, in our state. And we're very proud year round to be able to provide support to Mainers through the 211 program that uh, United Way is all across Maine as well as the CAP agencies support um, that help Mainers get connected to the help that they need. But today is an important part of that. Mm, absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. Kimmy, do we have an update? All right, drum roll, everybody. <gasps> okay, <laughs> update. We are at $9,724. Yes, we're almost at $10,000. I would love to raise at least $150,000, if not more, today. So keep that phone ringing. The number's on your screen. Lee and Sharon, I'll send it back to you. All right, we're off to a pretty good start. Thanks, so Sam, very high much. High energy in the phone yes. banks this morning. Good stuff. All right, most of us in for a pretty messy morning commute. Yeah, and if it's not that way where you are now, guess what? You'll get it for the afternoon. But Mike Slifer is someplace where we're getting some snow right now. Portland. And we'll check Sam coming up. Yeah, we've got some uh, big old flakes falling this morning. That means that sidewalks, car windshields, and roads are snow covered. We've got continuing coverage after the break. Yeah, expecting a solid three to six inches, locally higher amounts, but how does it actually pile up? Have a look, Greater Portland, it's really gonna ramp up through the morning and early afternoon. And at times there could be an inch per hour snowfall rates. I'd hold off on shoveling and plowing until six o'clock. There's gonna be some bands hanging around along the coastline, even until about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Lewiston tops out around seven inches. It ends a little sooner, so after three, you can get out there and start your cleaning up. Bangor, we get about four inches, and I'd say by three o'clock, you can get out there and start shoveling and making things a little better. All right, I'm back with more on this storm and a look ahead to the next over the weekend in a few minutes.
640 now and you're looking at some snow from earlier this morning in Bangor. We're following this storm from the coast to the mountains. That is right and our own Mike Slifer is live in downtown Portland. Mike, how's it looking out there right now? Lee, Sharon, we've been dealing with these big snowflakes and they have been piling relatively efficiently and they're rather wet. So I want to point something out here. Take a look at the sidewalk. Sidewalk snow covered. Roads are slushy and slick. I've been watching traffic actually come up High Street and every now and again you'll see a car just struggling to get a little bit of traction. You can kind of see just how big these flakes really are and that's really allowing them to pile up quickly. Even areas that have been either shoveled or plowed are starting to become snow covered again and crews have been out this morning in full force it seems trying to stay on top of everything that of course hasn't stopped a lot of the pedestrians i've seen a lot of people out walking their dogs uh, saying that they actually enjoyed the wintry weather especially compared to what we've seen the last couple of weeks it has been wicked warm not the case out there this morning though so just make sure you're traveling with care and clean those cars off remember to try to get some of the snow off of the roof and things like that as you get ready to start your day. We're maybe mixing in just a little bit of rain at this point, but otherwise it's mostly snow. We are going to send it back inside right now. Hi, Michael, thank you very much, sir. All of a sudden I have a skunk in my house. A skunk in her house. What do you do in a situation like that? Well, obviously you probably shouldn't make any sudden movements, but we'll let you know how <laughs> a woman in Maine handled this stinky situation. Just ahead. It's got to end badly. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, just about all school districts have the day off, except in northern Maine, where there won't be as much snow. But there'll be quite a bit falling throughout the day. I'll be back to show you numbers and look ahead to the next storm, too, which is going to fall over the weekend in just a couple minutes right after the break. Good morning, everyone. I'm New Center Maine's Chloe Thibault, live in Bangor for our annual Project Heat Telethon. Have a big group of volunteers here behind me that have been taking your calls all morning since 5 o'clock, so please keep calling that number at the bottom of your screen. We're getting close to our $10,000 mark, but we still have a long ways to go. We raised $150,000 last year, so please keep calling in all day. Our phones will be open until 7.30 tonight.
All right, you can see the phone number to our Project Heat uh, telethon at the bottom of your screen, and then you can see cancellations scrolling behind it there. Yeah, if you're looking for all the latest closings and delays, there's a complete list, including all the parking bans, any other storm center related information. It's right on our website. It's on our mobile app as well, so you can download that, sign up for alerts, and you'll get to know what is and what isn't, <clears throat> which is most likely in your case today. Yeah. What is most likely not happening <laughs> right. today? I mean, we, I, I got the text early, a lot earlier than I normally do. It was in like the the four four thirty to uh, five o'clock range. Four forty eight. So yeah, Portland so, said we're done. Yeah, so. exactly. It was pretty easy one to call, I think, and it was the timing. Um, and you know, even if it was three or four inches, the timing itself. Um, from start to finish the entire school day, it's going to snow. So. Yep. Um, and it looks like some spots will get over over that too. So here we go. Storms rolling in right now. Uh, just a few fine, fine flakes have fallen so far in Bangor. They're kind of like little prisms. When you see them in the light, they shimmer. They're kind of cool to see. But the leading edge of the storm itself is clearing Waterville and closing in on Bangor. Southern Maine's been in on it for a couple of hours, and we've already got almost an inch of accumulation. It's a fluffier, drier inch inland. It's a slushier, sloppy one at the coastline, and that's because temperatures are a little milder. Uh, Portland 34, Cape 34. There might be a little rain mixing in on some of the islands. Wells, though, is starting to drop. Last hour 36, now 33. And the only little bit of rain that I've seen possibly could be like Goose Rocks Beach in Bitterford Pool. There's not going to be much mixing with this storm, primarily snow. A really wet snow down in York County, but snow. Um, the steadiest of it is in the greater Portland area, stretching back up 302, the Roosevelt Trail, and then back over Sebago Lake and then into the Oxford Hills. And it's coming down at a pretty good rate. The snowflake size is very large, and it'll probably get a little bigger too as we get into the middle of the day as this thing gets more efficient. There's the leading edge, clearing the mouth of the Penobscot River over to Castine now in Brooksville. And it's going to be moving north and moving east from Plymouth. So. Again, we're just minutes or so away from getting into some steadier snow, and that'll instantly slicken up the roads with that temperature right around 30 degrees. Low pressure still back in New York State. When it gets to the Gulf of Maine, this thing swells up, and this becomes a really good snowmaking machine as it throws moisture back into slightly colder air. And the snow rates could be like an inch or so per hour from about 9 a.m. through about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Snow intensifying and expanding this morning. Temperatures are gradually dropping, so road conditions are already tough and they're going to get worse, especially during the middle of the day when we get into these steady snow bands and these really large flakes and the efficient accumulation. Tough, tough driving around. And these bands will be around here until about 3 o'clock. You can see steady snow, Portland, Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, and Bar Harbor until about 3. And then that band collapses really fast out into the Gulf of Maine. We'll clear out this evening, but there'll be some wind. So even though the evening commute's going to be much, much, much better, there'll still be some blowing snow, and you might come up on like an open field at some point, and snow gets blown back over onto the road that was just plowed. So it could be a little bit tough for you getting home later on this evening. Snowfall amounts three to six inches, locally higher too, especially within this purple area. But I've got about six in Portland, seven Lewiston, and about three and a half, four for Bangor. North of Bangor, there's not going to be much. One to three in the Highlands, virtually nothing in Aroostook County. And then also amounts held down in southern parts of York County along the coastline, where it's a warmer snow, a wetter snow, really slushy too. Tomorrow, frigid, Saturday frigid, daytime highs around 20, overnight lows in the single digits, both above and below zero. And then the next storm comes at us, same origins from the Midwest, cutting across the lakes, same track. So what does that mean for us? A mainly snow track. I mean, it'll be again, a wet snow, but mostly snow out of this one. Now it's fast moving. It's Saturday night and gone first thing Sunday morning. In fact, probably some sun coming out Sunday afternoon, but the worst of it will be Saturday night. Three to six inches, I'm thinking again, with maybe some higher amounts, a little bit over six. As we get closer, we'll throw some numbers, get a little fine tune for you. One to three down uh, Kittery and the seacoast of New Hampshire, where there's probably a little mixing with some rain. There's the rain forecast. Gale warnings go into effect at noon when the wind starts picking up out of the north. As that storm starts to crank in the Gulf of Maine, we could have gusts of 40 knots. Snow tapers off later this afternoon. Sunshine returns tomorrow, but so does the bitterly cold air. Only 18 inland and 20 at the coast. Morning lows on Saturday morning, sub-zero. Even along the coastline, I think this snow that we're getting right now will do the trick and get us down to like one below zero or two below zero. Snow Saturday night returns. 
tapers first thing Sunday. We're clearing out on Sunday. A lot of that day is actually OK. Uh, and temperatures briefly get milder above freezing by a degree or two and then back into the deep freeze Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a lot of next week. Really cold stuff. Really cold. All right. All right. Nothing we can do except nope. prepare for it as best nope, we can. It's January. This is what we get. Cold and snow. All right. Thank you, Todd. So we've all been driving down the road. You notice that distinct odor of a skunk. But you don't expect that to happen right inside your own home, right? Well, this is the story of Willa Worth. On Sunday morning, she went to let her dog out. We all do it. That's when a skunk snuck into her home and started spraying. Worth says a skunk sprayed her dog and then nearly everything else in everything else in the house. She even had to have her carpets removed because of the stench. We'll leave it to her to just tell you how bad it was. At this point, I felt like my, I felt like it was so piercing, the smell. It's nothing like driving on the road when you're like, woo! Like this is a whole other, whole other echelon of skunk smell uh, in my home. I mean, she seems to be good spirited about it. Worth says she was able to get the skunk out of her house with the help of the Portland police. She expects to be back living in the hopefully smell free home in the next couple of weeks when the smell is a little less harsh. Oh, if you've so. ever had a pet sprayed, you know what a oh. challenge that is. So good luck to she you. She is all. still smiling. So. Yeah. All right, coming up, five things to know as you head out the door this morning. First, a look at what they're working on for the Today Show. Good morning. Coming up on today, complete coverage of the historic impeachment proceedings that will unfold on Capitol Hill today. Plus, that interview with a key figure at the center of the case against President Trump, why he says the president knew exactly what was going on from the very beginning. Also had this morning, Prince Harry making his first public appearance since the royal split. We'll have that and a live report from Canada where some potential trouble is facing Harry and Meghan in their soon to be new home. Those stories plus we'll have some fun with a cast well, of now, so least you can do Blank show Creek as their hit show comes to a close. We'll have that and more when we see you here on the table. All right, as we head to break, we want to take a look at the hardworking volunteers in our Project Heat phone banks. They would love to hear from you. Look, Shannon Moss is begging you to call her. Call Shannon, please. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Now we'll look at five things you need to know on this storm center Thursday. Of course, the morning commute going to be a messy one for much of the state. You can take a look at I-95 right now down to bare pavement here in southern Maine, but the snow continues to come down and it's really just because crews have been out in full force, but there have been a number of accidents reported, including a tractor trailer off the road in South Portland. That's northbound on 95, but right now all lanes are open to traffic. Continue to get the latest alerts on our website and mobile app. We are back to big old snowflakes here in Portland. Sidewalks are slick, roads are slushy, and this is all just getting started. More snow on the way today. Make sure you take it slow, not only this morning, but heading into the afternoon as well.
in a winter wonderland here in Norway. The snow continuing to come down and we have crossed the inch mark for snowfall. Schools are closed. Ski area is open. Lost Valley actually opens early today. If you want to hit the slopes, we are anticipating upwards of six inches here and of course keeping keeping very close eyes on the storm system. But great news for anyone who wants to get out in the snow in Norway. Meteorologist Mallory Brook, New Center, Maine. All right, thanks, Mal. You can see the project heat number at the bottom of your screen. That is why you are not seeing closings and delays at the bottom of your screen, but they are definitely coming in, lots of them. You can find a complete list of closings, delays, parking bans, everything Storm Center related right on our website, on our New Center main mobile app as well. So just download that, sign up for alerts, and you'll get all your closing cancellation delay information. And our Project Heat volunteers in Portland and Bangor are ready to take your calls all day today, right to 7.30 tonight. Your donations go a long way toward helping Mainers stay warm through the winter. You can call the number right there on your screen to make a donation. And every little bit adds up and helps, just like the snow piles up and adds <laughs> up. So do the donations. And we're up to more than $10,700 right one now One helps in and one doesn't, though. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. And this one gives uh, you a backache. <laughs> this telephone was scheduled a while ago, and it just happened yeah. to show up on the same day of a snowstorm. But it's a great reminder of why today for Project mm. Heat is so important, because a lot of people just feel like, oh, we'll turn on the heat. Sure. Not everybody can do that. Not and, everyone has and, that luxury. And with what you're about to tell yeah. us, we're going to need heat. Sure. Moving forward. Or they have to manage it, you know? Sure. I mean, they have to decide, okay, should I be turning it up today or hold off till tomorrow when it's going to be 20 degrees, right. you know? Uh, there's the snowfall map for you. Most see three to six with locally higher amounts. Far northern Maine, not as much. And far southern Maine, not as much. And then over the weekend, another storm. Similar snow amounts probably, too. Oh, boy. Stay safe out there, everyone. Take care.